talking heads who have no real concept for what is going to change schematically and like what is actually going to look all that different because a lot of people the the constant take is there's going to be a drop off from Monken to Bobo. There just is. And then you could throw out, okay, what happened at Auburn? What happened in South Carolina? What happened at the end to Colorado State? But with your experience there and with what you know about what Bobo runs and what Bobo is going to do versus what Todd Monken does schematically, what do you think is going to be the biggest shift? And are you all that concerned about schematically anything changing? Yeah, no, uh, the answer is no. I'm not, I'm not concerned schematically. I think at times, um, we probably put too much, I say we, the collective as just like fans and people in the media put too much of a focus on an impact on coaches and, and mm. probably talk enough about players. And I, I just, I think any coach will tell you uh, good coach, good players make good coaches and bad players make bad coaches. Mm. Uh, and it really is that simple. And with Georgia right now, they have great players. I mean, it's just, They've stockpiled talent. Um, you know, I, I've said this and it's true. And I've talked to other Georgia teammates and they've reiterated the same thing that I played with. The the offensive skill talent and position talent from A to Z that Mike Bobo had compared to what he has now is it this this group of talent is so much better. It really mm-hmm. is. I think the most talented offense that he had, in my opinion, was probably the 2012 offense which set a lot of offensive records, averaged 40 points per game, you know, took Alabama down to the last play in the SEC championship game. Um, and I still think, man, what he has, what he's inheriting on the offensive side of the ball, and even with a quarterback who is kind of unproven in Carson Beck, but mm. a really talented skill position group who's bringing back pretty much all their leading receivers from last year, added two guys in the portal, and Ra-Ra Thomas, Dominique Lovett from Missouri, an All-American tight end. And then you just look at their offensive line. I mean, it's just five star after five star. And mm. and then you throw on top of this, he's gonna have a great defense. Like people yeah. forget that Mike Bobo never had a great defense when he was at Georgia, averaging mm. three points per game, whatever year whatever year it was. He, he I mean the, <laughs> you know, it it always felt like it was if, you know, we, we would have to score with forty three points to win to an extent or um, you know, he just never had he had good defenses, kind of hit or miss sometimes, but man, it's just on offense or defense, it's it's not the same. And so the players really are gonna make it, I think, a lot easier for him. And he's already a great coach, developed a lot of really great quarterbacks and other positions that he's put in the NFL. And and um, but there is high expectation that comes with it. You're two time national champions and the name Bobo, it's funny, the name Bobo around Georgia uh is a polarizing name. I mean, yeah. it brings out a lot of emotion, good or bad. Um, what does and, it do for you? Mostly good, <laughs> bad. What is it for you? Yeah, mostly good. Uh, there are some PTSD moments getting ripped. Uh, <laughs> does he? Because he doesn't seem like that kind of guy. Is he kind of different as a coach? Is he? Would he surprise a lot of folks versus how he is in uh, quarterback room meetings and things you, like that? You say that he's not like that. What do you mean? He like, seems very low key. He seems very oh. laid back. He seems very like just. I, I, I don't know. I feel like he's completely different than 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 that with actually coaching quarterbacks. Uh, he's, he's very intense, very, okay. um, very demanding. Mm. And I think you, as a 18 year old kid, it's a little bit shocking when you're coming out of high school because you know you're pampered and you're highly recruited, and you go through yeah. this and, and everybody tells you how great it is, and then you get to college and you're there's a de recruiting phase to it all. Mm. Uh, and, you know, Coach Bo Ball, there's no doubt about him. He's intense, he's demanding, but he's a great coach. Um, and if you buy into his style and what he teaches and what he coaches, it works. Bottom line, it works. Uh, and you got, oh, you got guys like Aaron Murray and Matthew Stafford and D- D- David Green. And D- I mean, it, there's a lineage of of quarterbacks that he is in that system that, that he's developed. So he knows what he's doing. I think it's just about dropping your ego and, and being coachable and – focusing more on what you know what what they are saying not necessarily how they're saying it which is tough at times Mm. um but he the thing i always loved about coach bobo and i think the quarterbacks that are there now uh, can relate to this is he played the position and he played Mm. the position at that school being the quarterback at the university of georgia i would say in my opinion outside of maybe the governor and the (laughs) 
coach at the University of Georgia. It is probably the third most, uh, and, pro- and maybe you could put the quarterback before the governor of, mm. of the most scrutinized position in the state of Georgia. Yeah. Uh, because if you play good, it's the greatest thing in in the in the world, and if you play bad, it's the worst thing in the world. And it's it's the good and bad for your family too. It's not just you; yeah. uh, your family feels it as well. So I think that relatability and that that being able to sit in a room with him and and him know what you're going through if you had a bad game, or him uh, being able to relate when you're on the mountaintop is all so important when you're dealing with the psychology of a 19, 20, and 21 year old. Interesting. Um, in terms of UGA, where they're weak, something that I had pinpointed where I was like, I, Tennessee wasn't scared of uh, Keely Ringo. That was something that was very clear. And Keely Ringo, multiple pass interference, he had that pick, uh, but that was something that they wanted to attack is the secondary. Is It seems like the last couple of years, if there was one thing I would circle, and it's you're really, you're really trying to find a needle in the haystack when it comes to fun. Fall- <laughs>